enga iwi, enga mana, enga waka, enga haue fa haere mai, haere mai, haere mai. Rau rangatira mā, tēnā koutou. Kā nui ta hari koa haere mai nau koutou kātoa. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā rā koutou kātoa. My name's Greg Ward. It's my absolute pleasure to be joining you here as we move into this, Expert Insights Virtual Presenting. So this is how to command the screen and how to engage your audience using some really simple ticks, uh, sorry, tips and tricks that we have right to hand right now. Because what we're seeing here on screen is not a great deal more than everybody else has already within your environments and in your space. And I, I wanna share this with you because I found it really effective. Uh, and from a presenting point of view, it has been the difference between pretty much everybody else and the way they put together their presentations and where I am, um, and it's got me work. I've, I've ended up being getting physical work off the back of just how, how I'm looking here. So that's something really important to think about as we're building towards the future as well. So let's get underway. So the first thing we're going to think about uh, when we're looking at this as a virtual in, uh, environment is your physical environment. So that was one of the first things that I had to start thinking about right in the process of, of the start of the lockdown. So what happened for me, uh, which was roughly six weeks ago, maybe almost seven weeks ago, I had a client and that client started to make a mention that they were looking at canceling their event after looking at the world situation. And I didn't think too much of it, but I turned up to a meeting and it was a virtual meeting in this kind of space. And uh, I was around about five minutes late coming into the meeting. And as I got into the meeting, I heard the convener say, and that's why we're canceling the event. And so my first thought was, no, we're not going to cancel this event. We're going to go virtual. And then I gave it a, a scenario as to how we could make that work in a virtual setting, uh, to which uh, we got a really good response. And so we're still building on that. And it's been quite a number of weeks in the process, but we're building on it right now. In the meantime, went to Australia. I was at the Professional Speakers Association convention in Adelaide, and it all started to unravel around the world. And I broke the conference halfway through, came back to New Zealand. When I arrived back in New Zealand, uh, although I was about a few hours short of the lockdown uh, deadline, I made the decision to go into lockdown anyway and do a self-isolation for 14 days. We've got the space here at home. We have a, a, an office. So if I'm not traveling around uh, uh, New Zealand, Australia, or the rest of the world uh, presenting or emceeing, then I'm here. I'm doing my sales and marketing. So I had this space already, the physicality of the space. And my goal then was to go, how can I transition my space into a virtual environment. And so that's where I started work. As you can see in that picture there on screen, uh, we have uh, the good old reflex paper. Now that's a critical point because what we need to do is need to raise your camera to eye level. You wanna get up to that, that point where you're able to look down the camera and we're actually, in the, I'm standing here and the reason I'm standing is because there's a different level of energy that happens when we present or when we talk with people rather than sitting down. And you'll notice that as well, I'm sure, in all of your meetings when people move in, everyone's sitting down, camera is looking directly kind of up your face, up your nose. Um, there's, you're lit from behind, so we've got dark faces. Uh, there might be a, a, a window open, and that window is shafting light right across the room in a, in a, in a way, and you'll find that the cameras are often the, the, your computer camera, and it's okay, but it, the quality of it is not as flash as you potentially could get. I didn't have a webcam at the start of the lockdown. I called a friend and said, hey, have you got a spare cam? And he says, yep. And he brought me a camera and it's about five years old. It will only go to 720 uh, HD. It won't get any higher than that. Uh, and it's uh, not incredibly feature rich, but it's better than the laptop camera that I've got. So I've got it up there and I'm using that focused on a stand directly behind my screen. And I've raised my screen even higher than you can see in that picture right now. It's currently... Uh, just below where the camera is. And the reason for that is so I can look from a peripheral vision point of view. As a presenter, if I'm like this, and I'm looking down at something, um, I'm not connecting with you. And that's where that physical environment modification is really important. Now, you might also notice that as I move my head away, that my voice gets a little quieter. And the reason for that is because I'm running a microphone above me. So as you can see in the picture as well, so if I bring this down here, you can just see I have got a mic here. I'm fortunate 
I've done a bit of voice work as well. So this ca this microphone I had here in my space, but you can pick up a pretty inexpensive podcast style microphone and it's what we call a large diaphragm mic and that will give you really really clear audio so much better than just the computer so much better than than, than simply your uh, a, a headset as well now the physicality of that obviously there is is really important um and i'm trying to think also where, where we are so yeah so here we are i'm, I'm directly down uh, the barrel of the camera and I'm also monitoring my audio. And what I'd like to uh, point out, also in there you can see in the picture, there's a number of screens that I've got lined up. So I'm running on an old couple of iPads that I happen to have lying around. I've got an iPad which is mirroring my screen so I can see the presenter uh, within there. Um, I've got another iPad which I use uh, when I want to do a secondary Zoom call. So sometimes you want to be able to have a back channel chat with somebody and people have got computers and they've got phones you can set up another quick Zoom meeting and by muting one set, have a conversation off to the side. So that's quite a valuable thing as well. Down my right hand side, I've got uh, some music elements, which I could... Um, uh, I can throw some music into the background um, if we really wanted to put some music in there or some, some a bit of BGM as, as we go. Again, that's not necessarily something you're gonna have in your space, uh, but it's a, it's a nice little nice to have. But the one thing that we're doing here is, is this. We want to have absolutely crystal clear audio. And there's a couple of reasons for that. If we've uh, got audience and the audience are watching our screen, the challenge that we have from that is that we have bandwidth dropouts, we can have uh, artifacts turning up. Um, sometimes it gets a bit clouded you know, and, you, know, you know, from a screen point of view, and we understand that because we expect it. We expect dropouts, right? That's part and parcel of it. But what happens is that it doesn't retain our, our uh, attention. So we potentially can move away from the screen. Plus we're in our home environments, which means that there are a lot of other uh, stimuli that we wouldn't normally have uh, outside of a conference environment as well. Because in a conference environment, you have a lot of factors which force your attention to the stage. You've got lighting, you've got surround sound audio, you've got the physicality of being in a space with other people. So they're to your left and your right, and you can feel them. It's a sense, it's a shared sense of connection. And so you tend to have that level of focus. When we don't, uh, when we're here in our home environments, you have got so many other things that you could be doing. And we do this because we can. We get up from our chair and we move off. And you may be doing it right now, getting up and, and moving around. And if you haven't, what I'd really like you to do right now is to do that. I'd like you to stand from where you are um, seated right now, if you are seated. Just take a moment, and I will take a moment for this. I would like you to stand up in the space that you are currently in and just stand, be in that space. And then if you can, if you're not connected by he headphones, feel free to have a little bit of wander. If you are connected by headphones, just wander a little bit um, uh, around as well. And once you finish that, I'd like you to go back to your seat, get yourself comfy, and sit back down in that space. Cool. I'll take a moment there. So somebody may be stretching because I tell you what, it's morning. And although I went for a run this morning, um, it's uh, still kicking on. So people will move, they'll stand, they'll go to different locations. If your audio is clear, if you've got crystal clear audio, they will still maintain the connection. The way that I'm achieving this, the sound that you're getting from me is I'm going through a mixing board, but the mixing board's not actually the, the be all and end all of this. What is, is I've got a compressor on board and that compressor has a thing called a noise gate. So it's a piece of kit you can buy from an audio shop. You can get it from uh, uh, potentially something like PB Tech as well. And essentially you route your microphone through the compressor and that compressor then uh, go out from there and take it in to the computer. Now I'm going in via a uh, audio to digital converter, but you can go directly in out of the compressor uh, with uh, audio as well. Very simple to do, very simple to set up. You can do a quick check on uh, online to say, what should my settings be for this compressor? And there's a few different um, generic audio settings for vocal. What it does is it limits the bandwidth of your voice. So you don't have these high peaks and lows. It makes it nice and smooth. And the gate 
is an important part. So when I'm talking, the noise gate is open and it allows my voice to come through. But the moment, critically, the moment that I stop, there's absolutely no sound. So the key here is having a zero sound environment within your room. And what I've achieved that is by using the microphone, I'm using this compressor, so it stops the sound of the, of, with the noise gate, so it stops that. And I'm monitoring using in-ear earbuds. Now, I've, I've turned to my side before, and I'm sure that you've seen it. So I've got these earbuds in here, but I'm not coming up the front with my earbuds, because I don't, I don't need to, I've got a microphone above me. And they're just here, over my back, like that. And it's a standard pair of earbuds. There's nothing new or complex or, or anything about them. So we come up over here and we drop that into there. Once again, so it's clean and we're visually nice, nice and clean. So what my challenge has been has been to try and get as close as we can to the, this um, sense of a television. And the reason for that is we have been conditioned through our whole lives to watch TV. We know it. We know that feeling, that space. And so... Uh, because of that, we expect stimuli. We need, we need to be stimulated. Basically, every four seconds, there is a cut in television if you're watching drama. So that's the, one of the reasons why you need to get this environment as tight as possible or as clean as possible in this space. Um, so let's go and have a look at the other aspect that's going to give us some of that uh, clarity, and that's this, creating the optimum lighting environment. And again, look, I, I'm going to go through this relatively quickly uh, within the time frame, and it's going to raise questions for you. So feel free to throw in some questions into the uh, Zoom chat that we've got going on there, um, and I'll attempt to answer those questions for us as we uh, go on through as well. Um, but great to have uh, all of you here um, joining us um, today. Thank you very much for um, joining us in the session. Uh, so lighting, optimum lighting, that's going to be really challenging, you might think, in a space uh, that isn't designed for lighting. And when I turned up here, I had 14 days, there was no way that I could get any other lighting. So I had to make do with the lighting that I've got. So this is what we have in this room, directly behind me, to this direction and that direction, not that rare, we have overhead lights, and they're just two in the center of a rectangular room. Now, overhead lights are not great for this kind of environment. In fact, you can just see one bouncing off the baldy head, just there. Um, with that, what I've done, uh, because they're very low wattage bulbs and there's very little heat off them, and that's a really important point. They're low wattage uh, bulbs, there's very little heat. And because there's very little heat, I'm using paper as diffusers. So they've got the standard sort of cone-shaped uh, uh, cover on the lamp, and I've taped paper around each of those sections. As you can see in this picture here, uh, and that's given me a good lighting state behind me so it's not too hot. But what I've also done is I've put a light in front of me, and this is one of the critical things, because if we just backlit, we end up with this dark patch in the front of our faces. And this is the part that we want people to see. We're connecting with people. We want to look down a barrel of a camera and, and connect. So what I've done is I've put a, a light in front of me. Nothing flash, it's a 20 watt bulb, in a garage lamp, an orange corded lamp with one of those little, you know, metal grates over the front of it. And I've got that sitting on a microphone stand, but realistically it could have been a broomstick and I could have been, just stuck it up in the air. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Nothing in this environment matters apart from what's going down the barrel of that camera and what people can hear. So however this looks outside of it, you just don't worry about that too much. Just play with it. And the way I looked at this was, I'm going to try and fix it and then break it, fix it, then break it, fix it, then break it, and then fix it again. And that tr process of trial and error has given me that opportunity to create environments like this. So that garage light is directly up here. Now, when I first put it up, that's what it looked like. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a giant shadow on my face there that's coming off the um, microphone. And uh, it's way too bright. So it's just flaring out all madly. So what I did is I found myself an old piece of shower curtain. And that old piece of shower curtain is just uh, opaque enough and translucent enough to allow the light to shine through. So essentially, I've made myself a little bit of a diffuser. And if I can just move it around a little bit, I don't mind there. Hopefully that won't fall down. It's literally just hanging over a, a, a piece of um, metal that I have uh, just attached to my, my uh, microphone stand. 
everything in this room is jerry-rigged, but you can't tell. And that's really what the, the, the key to this is. But lighting is a really important part of your setup. So when you're thinking about light, you want to have front light. Mine's about 45 degrees above me, and it's just coming down this way. It's diffused, so it just gives a bit of a flat environment here. My light, lighting behind me is just enough to give light in the room to allow my green screen to work. And I'm sure that you're on, you know right now that we do have this green screen. The green screen is happening uh, beautifully here behind me and is allowing me to, to present in this space here. And we'll talk about that now when, we, uh, when we're looking at green screens and virtual backgrounds. So that image there shows you uh, what is actually here behind me right now. Uh, it's not this beautiful picture of Rio, which is a, 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 a wonderful memory for me from a, an event oh, God, a number of years now. Um, so let's go and have a look exactly in my environment. What I've got right this second is this. So it's just simply green pieces of cloth. And you don't have to invest in a huge amount of money for this as well. I know that we are in lockdown. I know that we've got challenges in here and how to get material. But essentially, whatever you've got that you could potentially use, it's a flat, plain sheet of one color, you can potentially get away with it, depending on the level of computer that you have and the, com and the version of Zoom that you're running. With this, this is from Spotlight. It's $10.99 and it's green cotton duck fabric. Uh, really simple. Now, if they, are, if they start to do deliveries or if they're already doing deliveries, and they might be essential services, you might have to check that out. I, I haven't done that myself. But just on that final day, I managed to get a delivery in of 16 meters of this wonderful green cloth. And so essentially, I have swathed my entire space here as well um, with this kind of cloth. Um, but what I, what I want to do is get a sense of what you're thinking as well. So I'd like you to jump in the chat uh, right now. And I want to tell me, uh, yes or no, do you like green screens? Do you like green screens? Jump in the chat, just a yes, yes or a no, depending on how you feel about it. Um, and if you're looking at that uh, uh, environment here. Okay, cool, thanks, Donna, yes. Okay, and I'll, oh, good, 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 good. Okay, so yes, yes, if chosen well, yep, absolutely. And I, I will agree with that um, with you as well. And I think that's one of the critical points because often what we see with this, right, is uh, people will choose something like that lovely, um, an MP4 file of, uh, actually I'll go and choose this now, and, and, it, and it possibly will show you my background at the same time, the green screen. There we go. Okay, so people will choose this, but they're not using a green screen. They've got a high spec computer and the AI that Zoom uses is cutting out that background, but it's doing that really waffly, waffly edge around you. And depending on your lighting state in your room, you could end up looking really dark with this sort of just rough edge around you with the chroma key and you've got this running in the background. Oh, and I should just point this out as well. If you look at the top um, up there, just up there at the back, you can see a little white piece that's bouncing around. Now that's a bit of light artifact that's happening on my green screen because I couldn't diffuse exactly that little point. I'll take this out and you can see where that bright light is right in the corner. And that's why, why and how important lighting is, because depending on how you use it, that's gonna be a, um, uh, a piece. Um, cool, there we go. Why do you need the green fabric if yours is the electronic green screen? Um, the reason is I haven't got a high enough spec computer to be able to actually produce that green screen on my computer. So I need the green screen behind me, but I'll tell you the secondary reason for it is actually probably the primary reason is that it gives you a much cleaner chroma key cut around you. So you don't have that kind of real edge waffle that happens. And if your camera is of a higher spec as well, you end up with an even better cut too. There's some other products that you can use that give you a really good chroma key cutout. So you can virtually not know that you're actually with that chroma key uh, in there. And vMix will do that. So if you want to make a note of this, vMix is really, really good. So, uh, and it's just search for that, vMix. And uh, it's a basically a piece of television software or streaming software, which allows you to set up scenes. Now, the beauty of about that is that you can get it on a 60 day trial. So it's a rough, I think it's got a cost of around about a thousand US, something like that to purchase. But if you get it on the 60 day trial, it comes with virtual sets. Now, virtual sets are really good, right? 
So this is a virtual set. So this gives me that ability to put information onto that screen, so which has, as of, you've seen prior, prior uh, and I'm allowed, I can put whatever I like in there. I'm doing this directly out of the virtual background uh, setup in Zoom. I'm not using a PowerPoint, I'm not using a show. This is just virtual backgrounds are all that I'm putting in there when I'm doing uh, essentially what is my PowerPoint show. I create them in PowerPoint, I export them as uh, PNG files, and then I place them into my virtual backgrounds. You've got the option, there's a little plus button inside that virtual backgrounds uh, area. You'll find that down by where your video is, because if you've used it before, you know, you click on the uh, up arrow beside where your video is, at the bottom you'll find virtual backgrounds, go in there and add virtual backgrounds in. Um, if you go, something like that, there we go. So you can have exactly the same kind of thing, put your logo in, put your, uh, uh, information in those um, setups. This is one that uh, we just did for the human genome meeting, which was held in Perth, but we ran it and I ran it from here. And uh, some of the other screens that they were using for the human genome meeting there as well. And so we set, got myself set up, so kept my head right in between those pieces of uh, information too. They're really good. Green screens, I, I find them incredibly useful. And because I'm using the green screen as a PowerPoint, Again, that gives me some really good op options to be able to personalize that setup. So really uh, handy and valuable thing to do. So the fabric is an important part. If you can get the fabric, use it because it gives you a much cleaner area. Remember, you're gonna have to light it. So you've got to get a uniform lighting. Try and keep it as clean and, and as wrinkle free as possible because every wrinkle depending on where your light source is, will catch a light and create shadow. And if it creates light or shadow, the opportunity is for your program to not judge it as green enough, which gives you those light of artifacts. As you can see, where is it? Up there, right there. So be careful with those uh, and just tr and, and play. It may mean that you have to move a light by six inches. That's all. But if that might make the biggest difference in the world. Or the same with audio. It might be that you could just move your mic to a certain point. Uh, so that's uh, elements of green screen. Let's jump forward and talk about things like screen sharing with PowerPoint and other sort of files. I love some of the aspects that we've got in Zoom, the ability for us to share uh, pieces in here. So one of those things uh, that I'd love to do this, if you've not already had this as a, as a opportunity, um, give this one a go because this is, this is really cool. So this is your, your whiteboard. So it's pretty simple kind of thing. The great thing about a whiteboard is that, again, you've got that physicality. We can change things up for uh, individuals as well. Mine's a touch screen, so I can uh, just write something there on the whiteboard, but you can also use a mouse, and the mouse uh, could do that. It's, it's a little harder to write <laughs> with a mouse as well, but you can use that, and then whatever you need to do, you can erase it out if you want to, but it gives a really good way of connecting uh, with your audience as well. So just stop the sharing on that piece there now and we'll bounce around to um, something like PowerPoint. I just wanna point uh, another thing out for us, which is how we uh, do PowerPoint. So when you say you're gonna share a PowerPoint, what often happens is this. You go to the PowerPoint, you share it. Notice that my eyes are down. I'm now looking into my space and going, all right, now I need to share this. Okay, how do I share that? Okay, so I'm sharing that screen. Oh, no, I need to have a slideshow. So slideshow, am I going to do that slideshow? Is that slideshow? No, no slide, not slideshow here. Um, is that slideshow? And now it's slideshow. And now it is. Okay, so that space of time was around about 30 seconds. 30 seconds of roughly dead air and waffle. So we don't want to have that kind of dead air and waffle. So what we do is instead is we actually start the slideshow prior to us sharing the screen. So we've got it there, we've set it up, the slideshow is running in the background, and then when we wanna share screen, we go, I just like to go to my PowerPoint now and like tell you a little bit more about what we're doing. So I go across here, click on share, and automatically we now have the PowerPoint is already set up and it's already sharing, and I'm able to then just click through those elements of that PowerPoint as well. So that gives us, if we wanna share a PowerPoint and do that, do the preset, set it up so that you've got that flow going on. As an MC, one of my 
biggest bugbears is dead air. You want to have that flow and a continuous flow. So that's really important. So if you can, get, if you can do things that allow you to uh, set that up in a way to eliminate the dead air, then that's absolutely fine. And that will work really, really well too. So sharing, really simple to do. Click on the sh uh, share screen and then uh, choose wherever it is that you want to um, share. Building presence and rapport. You might have noticed all the way through this presentation that I have been simply, as much as possible, trying to maintain eye contact down the barrel of this camera. That's one of the critical factors as a presenter is that you want to have eye contact. In a live audience, that's relatively simple to do because you can scan the audience and scan the crowd. In this kind of environment, you have to imagine where your audience is. And sometimes it's a valuable thing to put images of people that you love behind the camera, just slightly behind the camera, so that when you look at the camera, you have a sense of a feeling of who you're talking to. Or you can imagine it. Imagine who you're talking to down the barrel of the camera and use the camera as much as you would normally uh, do in a conversation. So if you want to whisper, you want to come in and talk to people on camera. This is important. And I need you to know this is important because reality, I could have any number of people on this call, but I'm talking to you, just you. So we're having this, an intimate moment with many, many, many people, but just with you at this particular point in time. And that's one of those critical things. You've got to remember that you're talking to individuals. You're not talking to a giant group. You don't have this ability where you can scan a crowd. And you go, hey, Bob, hey, hey Janet, how you doing? We don't have that. We've got this. And so we have to replicate the feeling that we want to achieve down the barrel of a camera. So it's the physicality, the pace, the control, and getting comfortable with the space because it's, it is quite an uncomfortable situation to find yourself in. So get comfortable around being uncomfortable. I know it's, but it's, a, it's a cliche, but it's true. And in the sense, the more you do it, the better it becomes. Get up, practice it, give it a go. Engagement techniques. Now, a couple of times along this way, I've asked you questions. Um, I've got you to physically do something in this space as well. Um, and uh, if we had a polling system set up, I haven't put polls in here, but I could have put a poll up that said, you know, do you prefer oysters or chocolate? And we could have polled that and we've got to got a, a, a session on that too. There are so many opportunities within Zoom as a platform, um, and that's just one. So we've got Microsoft Teams, you've got Google Hangouts, you've got join.me, uh, you've got uh, various streaming platforms like StreamYard and, 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 uh, and others. This is a great opportunity to experience and have a go at some of this technical setup. So that's um, some of the very swift elements. Uh, you want to be engaging people roughly every 18 minutes. No more, no more, no more. You want to be getting nice and tight and keeping that connection going as well. Now, uh, just before we uh, wrap up, it's uh, 1 minute and 46 seconds before we close. So, hey, has this been valuable for you? Um, if it has, yep, just let me know. Um, and is there anything burning that you want to know about at this particular point in time? I know it's been quick, it's been swift. Again, so, um, so chuck some stuff in here. Yep, thank you, awesome, great stuff, great stuff. I mean, it's really simple. It's pretty straightforward here. Um, if there's anything that I can obviously do for you, feel free to get a hold of me. One of the things that I, as we said right at the beginning, is that I pivoted, and I, it's a bit of a cliche too, the word pivot, to this as fast as I could. Because although we're in a relatively short time frame, we'll be coming out of this again, I think that this is going to be a really solid adjunct. So I'm working with a company in Brisbane, and we have a group of independent contractors all coming together, and we are creating and presenting virtual conferencing in this style, uh, which is a very valuable thing, because what we're also doing is monetized uh, on-demand streaming, which comes off the back of these. So it can be a conference, or it could be other small elements there. So that's pretty much it. Um, feel free, connection points there. And uh, I certainly hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Um, if I can support you in any way, let me know. And please go and practice. Fix it, break it, break it, fix it. Do whatever you can and have a play because that's really what it's all about. Cool. Thank you very, very much indeed for uh, uh, joining. Yes, indeed. Yeah, look, extended period. This practice is going to become more common. I agree. 
I would say that is highly, highly, highly likely. Uh, once people have got used to it, they won't want to go away from it. And I can tell you that it saved me so much time in terms of travel, so the, the value aspect. And in terms of conferencing, you've got to think, there's no venue hire anymore. There's no travel. There's no accommodation anymore. We've got this opportunity. There's no meals anymore. Um, I'm, when I'm doing conferencing, I'm, I'm making sandwiches in my kitchen. and I'm coming out here and I'm running the entire day on snacks and, and my own stuff here in this space. So we've got all of that opportunity, but, but the only thing that's different is, the only thing that's changed is we can't meet physically. Everything else remains the same, same level of quality, same level of service that's uh, within the two. So thank you very much indeed for joining us here. Um, if uh, there are no further questions at all here, and I don't I have to quickly have to have a look through here and make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, that's one of the things about the chat as well. If you are doing an extended event and you've got a number of people who are going to be there and a number of people presenting, then take an opportunity to have someone run your chat for you. So a secondary person who's just looking after chat and perhaps you can collate elements of uh, questions as well as we kick, uh, kick on through. So that's also, again, another valuable thing too. All right. I'm conscious of everyone's time. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, we will see you, I'm sure, at some point in the future, whether in person or physically, stay safe. Thank you very, very much indeed. Cheers, guys. Catch you.